Thank you so much for coming. It's uh, just a gorgeous day here at Lake Apacon, which is very befitting that we're really here today to celebrate the lake. And it's just unusual we have an opportunity to do something like this when there's not some kind of a crisis. Uh, and it's the kind of things we'd like to be able to, you know, do more often. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank someone that really helped put this all together that has actually been helping the lake for over a decade. And I don't want to forget her, so I'm going to start with her. I know Carrie Flew is here somewhere. Uh, and Carrie is, you know, um, she's everything you want someone you deal with in government to be. And I can say that having been in government for 37 years before I retired, she's always been honest with us for over a decade, doesn't always tell us the message we want, uh, and that is heavily so sometimes, but ev every one of the mayors here will say the same thing. They know when Carrie calls, she's being very honest and truthful with them as the administrators are already shaking their head on. So Carrie, thank you. You know, Commissioner, thank you for coming because we were thinking, and it, we think it's been about 15 years since we had a DEP commissioner come when there wasn't a crisis. So uh, it's probably long overdue, but hopefully this starts a new trend uh, because this is behind me is one of your greatest resources. It's just an amazing um, resource that so many people in New Jersey aren't even familiar with. Um, so thank you so much for that. Uh, we really appreciate you coming. Um, you know, a lot of what we're doing here today started a couple of years ago with the local mayors. Uh, and uh, three of our four mayors are here today, uh, Mayor Will Susan, Mayor Francis, and Mayor DiFilippo. And I think it's just because the three of them are so good to work with and such good people that we're able to kick off um, a mayor's meeting just to once or twice, some, you know, once, once every month or so to get all the mayors together and just for a few minutes focus on like a pack hung and nothing else from their plate. And they've been just so great to work with. And then when Governor Murphy came um, about a year and a half ago now, and I have to say, and Governor Murphy's now visited us twice and we hope to have that third time. Um, when Governor Murphy said, he said, I am going to have my DEP meet with you regularly. And I have to say, we kind of thought that was the right thing to say at the time and we didn't really expect it to happen. And the next thing we knew, we are dealing with Associate Commissioner Angerone, and um, Katie could not be a better person to work with. I mean, she's been completely honest with us. She has made herself available to us. She is really, really smart. None of us want to talk technical with her. Um, but more importantly, she just listened to us. And, and you know, um, Mayor Francis will be the first one to tell you that wasn't always what we wanted to hear when we brought ideas forward, but the, the thing we felt, we always felt we were having an honest and frank discussion, and um, at least we were being heard, and a lot of things are moving forward because of that, so I cannot thank you enough for what you have done to make this all work in a collaborative fashion. And you know, that's the thing, too often these days, we fight about all these things, and there's, we've lost that spirit of, of cooperation and collaboration. And you know, we always like to say that Lake Opakung is not, it's a, not a red issue, it's not a blue issue, it's a New Jersey issue. You know, it's, it's one of our greatest resources and if we can't take care of that, then, then we're doing something wrong. And you know, um, you know, too often, you know, we wanted to say, hey, it's New Jersey's lake, let them take care of it. No, it's all our lake. And, and it's something that we all have to take care of. And, and that's really why we're here today. And, and I'm absolutely blown away by who we have in the audience here. I only found out that uh, Congresswoman Cheryl was coming last night, and I can't thank you enough. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, it means so much to us, and you've been such a friend of the lake. Um, Senators Oroho and Buko, um, I don't know that we have two better friends when it comes to Lake Apakung. Uh You and your staffs are just amazing with what you do. Um, I know you get tired of hearing from us at times. Um, but you, you guys are just, you know, wonderful. Um, we have uh, in the audience, in addition to our mayors, we have the county uh, commissioners who have actually gone beyond what they need to do at, at numerous times. We have, uh, I always have to now think of how I say this, the director of the county commission is right, Steve Shaw? All right, I saw we have Sylvia Patillo here, who is a former mayor of Hopakung, but she's also representing uh, the Sussex County Commissioners. We have the uh, Morris County, um, representing uh, the Morris County uh, Administrator. We have Dean O'Leary. Uh, we have Greg Poff, 
who is a Sussex County administrator. This is when I really risk getting into trouble, right? When I look around and I'm going to miss somebody. Um, but uh, I know we have representatives from some of our legislators. I, I know Laura Dunn has a representative here, and I think some of the others do. So thank you all so much. We really do appreciate it. Um, and with that, um, I have the pleasure actually now of introducing um, the uh, our congressional representative for half the lake, uh, the bigger <laughs> half of the lake, I have to say. The Sorry, it's a, it's the a Jefferson half. and Opaka on the side and, and a really true friend, Mikey Sherrill. So thank you so much. I have just learned so much as an elected official, Marty. I have never heard um, people more praised for telling you things you don't want to hear. So thank you. Thank you. That's a great tip. Um, but no, thank you so much. Uh, I really want to thank the NJDEP Acting Commissioner Letourette for organizing this event today um, and to congratulate you on your nomination last month. It's wonderful to be here to kick off the summer lake season. I was just saying uh, earlier, I'm not a really great rainy day person, so thank you everyone for organizing such a gorgeous day to do this. It's so wonderful to be here. Um, thank you, Sean, all the local officials here, Mayor Francis and Wilsonson from Sussex County, as you heard, Commissioner Patillo and Administrator Greg Poff from Morris County, Commissioner Director Shaw. I, I, don't, I don't try to free, free form that one. Um, and John and Dina. Uh, we've seen our great senator, Senator Bucco, Senator Orho from the Lake Hapatcon Commission, Ron and Colleen from the Lake Hapatcon Foundation, Marty and Kyle. Kyle, congratulations on your new role. Kyle, I just <laughs> talked to you. Hi, right in front of me. Um, and and uh, I do get in trouble when I say but thank you, everyone, so much for being here today. Like always, the support for Lake Hapatcon and ensuring its health comes from all levels of government and our community. I don't have to tell you that Lake Hapatcong is one of our state's great treasures, a place for New Jersey families and tourists alike to come gather and enjoy the great outdoors. Many of you have been coming here since you were young. Uh, more than that, it's a crucial component of the local economy for surrounding towns in Sussex and Morris counties. I've been following the updates of the HABS mitigation projects funded last year through NJDEP's grant program and the collaboration and contributions of, well, really everyone here. Um, although I do have to give a, a special shout out to Mayor Francis, who is, I think, taken over Crescent Cove to run experimental HABS projects, which I really appreciate. Um, I'm hoping to get out on the floating classroom soon to see some of the other projects as well. On a federal level, I am looking for every opportunity to do my part. In 2020, I helped lead the effort to pass the Great American Outdoors Act, which is a piece of landmark conservation legislation to permanently fund the Land and Water Conservation Fund and ensure we have the resources we need to address the maintenance backlog in many of our public spaces. With respect to HABS, as chairwoman of the House SST Committee's Environment Subcommittee, I led a bipartisan, bicameral letter to the GAO asking for a review of the federal government's response to HABs and hypoxia with a goal of prioritizing federal research to help state and local governments respond to HABs most effectively. The GAO expects to finalize this report by the end of the year. And in the recent 2020 Water Resources Development Act, also known as WERDA, I fought to secure the explicit inclusion of, quote, inland waters of the state of New Jersey. Much of the funding had been directed to inland waters of Florida, so we got the New Jersey in there and the Great Lakes um, in an Army Corps demonstration project for detecting, treating, preventing, and eliminating HABs. The Army Corps is waiting for implementation guidelines for this program and funding levels, but we're continuing to check in and I'll keep everyone updated on that. In fact, I just met with our new New York district commander last month and hope to have him here in the district shortly. As I said before, it's always wonderful to be here to see the progress that this group has made. Um, I talk to members from across the country and I don't think there are stronger and more passionate advocates for district issues than there are here in New Jersey and especially I would say in the 11th district, the bigger half of the lake. So thank you all so much for being here. I sincerely appreciate it. And now I'll pass the mic to Commissioner Latrette. Thank you. Oh, you're supposed to, I'm sorry. You're gonna get you're gonna be fired. I, I knew it. 
No, um, and, I, and I have to say, when we first got involved with this, uh, the partnership between the Lake Opaque Hunt Commission, as represented by uh, Ron Smith and uh, uh, Colleen Lyons, and, and the commissioners, a, a number of which are here, and the Lake Opaque Hunt Foundation, just from day one, has been great. And I think that speaks so highly of Ron, who has a, a bit of a political background, which I think... Uh, I, we, we were like long lost brothers when we met. Um, it, is this wonderful that the two organizations can work so well together and we from the nonprofit standpoint and then from the more governmental standpoint, it's just a good fit. And when you have people like Kelly Doucette who works in the district for really good people, it makes it that much easier. So, all right, the commissioner, he's a really New Jersey guy. He, I, you know, he went to Rutgers, both college and law school, and we don't hold law school against you here. Um, you. He was a, an attorney for uh, uh, quite some time in environmental causes. And what, what really kind of uh, hit me was when you came into DEP, and I, I guess we first met at some meeting when we were down complaining about something in Trenton. Um, you were first counsel, then you were... Um, Chief of Staff, then you were Deputy Commissioner, so you've been, you know, you've kind of been in this rodeo before, so this is like a really good thing, and you're very well qualified. We were thrilled when you were nominated. We hope the Senate, um, you know, acts on this quickly, um, and, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce our Acting Commissioner, Sean Lauderette. Thank you. That's a beautiful day on the lakeshore, huh? I mean, this is, this is an outstanding place. It truly, truly is. So I uh, became introduced to Lake Hopatcong when I was younger, and, and my family would come up here uh, occasionally. And so in uh, 2019, when we saw this surge of, of harmful algal blooms, it, it hit me in, in the heart, not as hard as, as all of you, uh, who care for this place and, and love this place and have built your lives and your businesses and your families around it. Uh, so we have to do all that we can uh, to protect it. And I am so grateful for the partners that we have across this space today from our, our local elected leaders to our senators to our federal representative and for the incredible work of two people in particular. Uh, one who was, was mentioned already, uh, Katie Angarone, you have to stand up. Katie is our Associate Commissioner of Science and Policy. And the leader of DEP's HAB Task Force. She has brought to life the governor's vision for deploying more resources, for evaluating the science to ensure that the guidance we provide to our communities and our partners is actionable and current and meaningful. And she's led the expert teams that have been put together from, from government and academia and been a great, great partner uh, to the folks here. So Katie, thank you. And, and to our Assistant Commissioner for Natural and His Historic Resources, Ray Bukowski. Ray, you gotta raise your hand. Who, who oversees all of our state parks and natural areas and wildlife management areas uh, with, with his team, uh, including our new director of parks, John Cecil, and our, our superintendents. I, come, we've got, come on, there we go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so much care across this, across state government goes into protecting our resources. And there's a lot to do all the time. And we have placed a special priority on ensuring that we are better protecting our watersheds. And the experience of Lake Hopat Kong in 2019 and, and before that, before we were, we were measuring uh, HABs the way that we do now, it is an, a, a symbol of why watershed management is so critically important, right? Because like each of us, our water is interconnected, right? Our rural farms, our dense cities, our suburbs, our scenic and wa working waterfronts, and the roads that connect them all exist in a watershed. 
And it's important to note that how we conduct our experience of, of living and learning and working and growing businesses all around a place like this, that experience exists in, in a watershed, how we develop, how we conserve, how we manage land and the water that runs off of it. All of that impacts the waterways within watersheds, like the watershed that exists right here. So how we manage our stormwater, how we support our local governments, how we have moved this park facility off of a septic system that is a known cause of contributions to adverse um, impacts that can further the production of HABs. That, those are all examples of how we can preserve resources like this. And it requires each of us to think hard about what we do, like any environmental issue. Because by the time that we see it, that we experience the detriments of it, that we can't swim or we can't fish. By the time those things happen, it's too late. We all have to take care at the outset. And this is the lesson of environmental protection through and through over the decades, that what we all do matters that how we take care of this place is part of how we take care of each other. Because we can all keep these businesses open. We can all keep the visitors coming. We can all help promote the economy of this region and enjoy this lake if we're taking care of the things that we do individually that impact it. How much fertilizer we put on our lawns, whether or not we're cleaning out our sewer systems whether we embrace shared watershed planning and stormwater management, building priorities around things that don't seem important until they are. Because this is important. It's for all of us. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to celebrate the great work everyone has done. I would be remiss if I did not mention uh, how incredibly important it is, it is uh, to us that folks uh, get vaccinated against uh, the virus that, that has really so thoroughly impacted our, our economies and our ability to enjoy one another's company. Uh, and to help move that forward and encourage folks to, to get vaccinated and, and take good care of themselves and each other, we want to make sure that our state parks are providing an avenue uh, for folks to, to connect. So if you haven't already uh, seen that DEP uh, and the governor are promoting the New Jersey State Parks Vax Pass, where folks who have been vaccinated at least one dose by July the 4th can get a free uh, State Parks Pass for the rest of the season through the end of this year, I'd encourage you to go uh, to nj.gov uh, slash vax and visit and take advantage of that resource. And let's get more folks here. Let's continue to build the infrastructure like we're doing right up the hill to, to put more folks in our parks and take care of this place and take care of each other. Thank you. Wow, in addition to being great collaborator, uh, collaborate almost sounds bad, but a wonderful person to work with. Now I found out I get a free pass. <laughs> this is pretty good. I'm in. Um, and and, and I, I just want to, you know, I, I do see Assistant Commissioner Bukowski here. And as he knows in this park, and I, I welcome the new uh, head of parks. It's great to have you here. It's one of your nicest parks, honest. Um, that, you know, we've had a couple projects around here forever, and it's so nice to see some of them like moving forward, like the fa restoration of the of Popacong State Park Fountain, which one of our lead volunteers, Bob Rung, has been like carrying forward with himself for three years, and he's here today. Is thank you so much for meeting with us and getting those things moving. Um, and, you know, the HABS projects and the grants and everything are just wonderful. Um, I guess, you know, when I have two senators here, it's like, 
I guess I go with the senior senator so I don't get myself into trouble, or I go in the one that's actually in your district. Yeah, that, that's the way you work. Okay, I have to listen. Hi, uh, in that case, uh, you know, our two, the two senators here today, uh, as I said, we don't probably have two better friends in the world toward Lake Apakung, I just how supportive they are. And they, you know, and they, they're really friends. So with that, uh, I'd like to invite up uh, Senator Tony Bucco. Oh, we're having both come up together, Senator Bucco and Senator Steve Oraho. Because it will be short. We have the 24th and 25th districts. Thank you so much. We've been told that we can go out on the boat after this, so you can bet this is going to be short. <laughs> Commissioner, it's always wonderful to have you here. Um, we look forward to a speedy uh, confirmation process, get you through, and get you back up here again as a, as a real live commissioner. So, um, but you know, you look behind me, what a beautiful sight, right? Everybody recognizes it, but that just doesn't happen. We know that from what we've experienced over the course of time. And it takes uh, the Lake Apacon Foundation, the Com Lake Apacon Commission, the commissioners of both Sussex and Mars County. It takes the DEP and the mayors of the towns all working together to make this lake as beautiful as it is and to stay as beautiful as it is. And that is why I think Senator Oroho and I take great pride in Trenton of working so hard for this great state asset. Because I think Marty said it best, it's all our asset. And we all have an obligation to take care of it. And uh, I'm gonna let Senator Oroho talk about our legislation just briefly, but um, we are working on some things. Commissioner, we're going to be on the boat with you, so we're going to have you on each side. We're going to talk about a, we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, you'll have nowhere to run, but um, but but we'll take it easy on you. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Thank you, Senator Bucco. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Senator Bucco's dad. You know, Senator Tony Bucco uh, had a pleasant privilege of serving with him in the in the legislature. Uh, Senator Bucco started the Lake Commission, right? And, uh, and, and you know, he's just a terrific, terrific uh, person. And uh, as Senator Bucco had mentioned, the legislation we have, and it's, uh, it, it already passed out of uh, committee, got uh, $10 million for state owned lakes with respect to uh, uh, lake management. Uh, lake of Pacon and Greenwood Lake would get a, a pretty good chunk uh, of that money. So hopefully we can see that uh, legislation go through. But I also just want to welcome the commissioner, Latourette, up here to, uh, I'm taking the word acting off, all right, uh, up to Lake Apacon, because I, uh, probably within the past couple of weeks, we've already had like three or four meetings, you know, together. And the one thing is having the commissioner come up here, and that's why so many people are here, because it's so important that, you know, when the commissioner comes up to take a look at, you know, our uh, prime asset for, for, the, for the state of New Jersey, that's why you have a lot of the elected officials here. That's why you have, and plus, he's a nice guy to work with. Just the other day, on a, di a completely different issue, um, we were talking about it, and he said, listen, he says, I don't think we can do this. And we talked about before, if somebody's given a message, like Carrie and I have been friends for a long time, we went to high school together, right? Right? But, um, you know, but also to have somebody say, I don't think we can do it this way, but we can do it this way. Or have you thought about this? Or have you? So you have somebody with that kind of experience. So I know you have enough, a, a lot of issues with the Lake Commissioner. It's uh, with a lot of gratitude. We appreciate you being here. Uh, I know you've been here a few times already, and you're welcome any, any, any time. So, Commissioner, thank you very much. Okay, we're now uh, going to have a, a few brief remarks from our three mayors present. Um, and we're going to start with Roxbury because if this wasn't state property, we're in Roxbury. And that's what Mayor DiFilippo is going to tell you. And, uh, you know, Bob, please come on up. I know I, I every once in a while I really get him going. And, he, <laughs> and after he yells at me for like 10 minutes, then he like, usually calls back and, and, it, and is calmer. But I do sometimes get him going. Bob? But only Marty comes with a list of things he wants the commissioner to do. <laughs> I don't know how I got bumped to the top of the list, uh, Mayor Francis uh, Wilson, but why don't you guys come on up? You're down. You're going to speak, right? Come on, come on up. Let's do the senators. Uh, just 
that's really what it's about. All right. First of all, it's not my plan to tell my grandchildren. I was at a, an event where we celebrated a sewer hookup. <laughs> they, um, they think of me in a certain way. I don't want to change that. But those of us who care about the health of this lake, however, know there's much to celebrate today. Connecting the state park to the Roxbury sewer system represents one of the most significant steps we have taken as a lake community to restoring and preserving the health of Lake Apacon. But as we all know, sewer systems do not hook themselves up. It takes a lot of people. So I would first like to thank NGP Deputy Commissioner, uh, Catherine, uh, uh, Dep Commissioner, former Commissioner Catherine McCabe. It was, it, was, it was Commissioner McCabe who learned that the sewer system needed to be hooked up. And from that moment to today is why we're here. We, but I'd also like to welcome and thank uh, Acting Commissioner uh, Sean LaTourette, uh, because it was under your watch that this project, which many said could not get done, especially during a pandemic, um, it was started and completed. Thank you very much for that. And I'm going to mention them because they deserve to be mentioned as many times as we can. Um, uh, also, DEP Associate Commissioner of Science and Policy, Katie. Katie, thank you again for, for your leadership. Um, along with personnel from the Associate Commissioner of Natural and Historic Resources, Bukowski's Division of Parks and Forestry, and personnel from Associate Commissioner of Water Resource Management, Gardner's Division of Water Monitoring and Standards. These are the people who do the actual work to get us here today, not like us. Um, in Roxbury Township, special thanks to my fellow councilman, Mark Crowley, who's a fierce advocate for the lake, as well as Township Manager John Shepard and his staff, and in particular, Township Engineer Mike Kobelars, who worked closely with the state to get this done. I want to also thank my fellow mayors from around the lake, Mayor Francis of Apacon, Mayor Willison of Jefferson, and Mayor Mike Stanzillis of Mount Arlington. Working together, we make a pretty effective team with real results. Thanks to Marty Kane, Lake Apacon's voice, for bringing the mayors together and for the devotion you share for this lake. And a special thank you to the lake's two advocacy groups, Lake Apacon Commission and Lake Apacon Foundation, as well as our federal, state, and county representatives for your continuing support for making today possible. Thank you. Thank you all very much for making this happen today. Thank you. Well, I, I didn't write a speech because I don't need I don't need to write a speech to talk about our lake. So, but I won't keep up. Anyhow, thank you, Commissioner, for coming. Assistant Commissioner Katie. Uh, this, this lake here, the water of that treasure, our lake is our jewel. It is. The Burba Pacon is pretty much the entire west shore of our lake. So it's really important to us, the quality of our lake, what we do at our lake. Uh, and the, the lake issue that we address them are about leadership. And, and that's what we're looking forward to. It's refreshing that we see the commissioner that'll, and the assistant that will come up and give us the right time of day. That's important. It shows, it shows and encouraging to me that we're not alone when we have issues with our lake. And maybe in the past we have been a little bit. This is a state lake. My expectation is that the, uh, that the lake takes responsibility for it. And, and uh, lately I see more than before. So, uh, you know, we've, we've had discussions with Katie. I'm always coming up with new and different approaches. I will challenge you. I will continue to challenge you. So I'll give the commissioner a heads up right now. I got some other stuff that I have planned to talk about. The senators are done. And, and, uh, and, and the way that we do this, as I told the commissioner, is yeah, this is fine when we get here. We, we acknowledge everybody. Everybody's here. Thank you very much. It's important. But the real work is done when Katie and the commissioner sit down with the mayor and myself where we want to just have a cup of coffee and talk about the lake. That's how you get done. That's where the work gets done. The work doesn't get done in public speaking and, and you know, sitting in a bureaucratic place like Trenton. Been there a couple of times. Talked about uh, hab control. Talked about triploid grass carp. We're going to visit that. Talking about what we've been doing for the past 20 years and expecting we're doing the same thing, expecting different results. That's simply not going to work. It's not. So I promise you, I will bring challenges to you. We, we're going to talk about them because that's what we have to do to keep our leg as good as we're trying to get it. So with
with that being said, thank you. I always say I don't want to have to follow up after, my, after Mayor Francis, so, but I'm going to follow up after Mayor Francis. Uh, first and foremost, thank you, uh, Commissioner Latourette, for, for coming here today. Uh, I just want to make note that the governor came here last year, it was on my birthday, and bought dinner for, you know, the mayors at a really great restaurant here in Lincoln Park. Just, just letting, just, just, just making note of that, just, you know, future reference. Um, but it was on my birthday, it was actually uh, uh, pretty cool. Um, but we appreciate you, appreciate all your staff and everybody that's here today, all of our elected officials. Um, appreciate the governor coming here. It really, as Mike has said, it really shows that you know Lake Apacon is becoming um, a concern for for the for the state. Uh, as Mayor Mayor Francis said, this you know this is our jewel. I'm a, I'm a lifelong resident of Lake Apacon, growing up right next door on Lake Shawnee. Uh, I'm the new mayor on the block. Uh, 2019 was my trial by fire. Uh, I've served on the Lake Apacon Commission for a few years prior to becoming mayor. And uh, my first six months in office, we got hit with a harmful algal bloom. And uh, it hasn't stopped since, just saying, um, since I've been mayor, we've, you know, pandemic wasn't on my, on my uh, radar, uh, becoming elected official. Uh, but it was a scary time in, in, in that summer of 2019. Uh, we watched our lake, uh, you know, prime time. Uh, you know, you've come to Lake Apacan at, at a perfect time, right before Memorial Day weekend. And from Memorial Day through Labor Day and, and beyond, this lake is, you know, uh, an economic resource for this entire region. And we watched our lake go barren. There was nobody on the lake. And we had to convince people to come back. And that's scary uh, for us as, you know, local elected officials when we have our local businesses coming to us and saying, what are we going to do? And um, you know, it was thanks to, to Marty and, and Ron Smith from the commission and our foundation. Um, you know, the fact that we as mayors are getting together and, and Katie, you know, thank you so much. We, we ever since, you know, the, the meetings at a pack on high school, you know, where the public came and we all got lambasted on what we're going to do with, uh, with Lake of uh, we promised that we would get together and we would, we would try to solve some of these problems together. And we have done that and we continue to do that. Uh, we, we meet on a regular basis as mayors. We meet on a regular basis with Katie and her staff. And I, I really think that's making great progress for Lake Apaca, and it's doing great things. So we, we truly appreciate that. Thank you to Kerry. Uh, Kerry was on the, I served on the commission with Kerry. Um, you know, when we didn't really have a great dialogue with the DEP, that Kerry was, you're, you're right, she was always there for us. Um, she'd always give it to us straight. Absolutely, uh, that's Kerry's style, and we certainly appreciate that. Uh, but you know, we appreciate the open lines of communication and for uh, doing the best for Lake Apaca, and that's what we're all here for. And uh, thank you all for coming. We look forward to a great summer. We're not even going to mention harmful algal bloom. It's not even in our language anymore. Um, but we're going to get through this. Our businesses deserve it. Um, you know, two, this is two years between harmful algal bloom and pandemic. They deserve a good summer, and we're really going to work hard to get it for him. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I don't know if I've ever heard Mayor Francis so succinct. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, but the boat does await us. Um, I will get shot by a member of my staff if I don't say just to show that we're actually on to business at tonight. On the YouTube channel, you can watch Voices of Lake Apacong, which was done by local students uh, about the harmful algal bloom here at the lake. What time, Donna? 7 o'clock, Lake Apacong Foundation YouTube channel and Facebook Live. It was funded through a Smithsonian grant. Many of you here in the audience were interviewed, so thank you for participating. And I would have absolutely got, I would not have left the park alive probably if we didn't get a public service announcement out. So <laughs> thank you, Donna. Thank you for doing that. Um, and really, I guess we don't cut a ribbon for a sewer line, huh? And uh, I know they're, they're still tweaking it, shall we say. A toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, and also, thank you for the, you know, standing back up that rain garden in the park. That was really important for us, and it meant a lot. And just uh, overall, the park personnel, 
I have to tell you, if you came back a few days ago, this place looked like a battlefield from all the work. They've done an amazing job getting this park in shape. Um, and, and, and I will say, we know that the parks people don't always have, uh, I'll say, um, as many resources as they really need to get the job done. And you come here on a Saturday and Sunday, this is a very different park. We put hundreds of thousands of people, I mean, I guess Blanca could tell you exactly how many um, uh, that come through here in, in a year, but it's a lot of people. And this is the public access to the lake. I mean, this is where people from around the state get to see Lake Opakong. It's just not a rich people's lake. It's a public access lake. And, and you know, we can't say enough about how important that is. And with that said, and saying we cannot thank you enough for giving us the opportunity to work with you because we think uh, the lake completely benefits from us just all working together.